So another, I think, very meaningful sort of post hoc analysis, uh, but a helpful one to guide which patients benefit the most from glofitimab therapy, and it probably is applicable to other bispecific antibodies as well, uh, looking at patients who had uh, prior CAR T cell therapy or didn't, uh, and also trying to separate patients by the amount of bulky lymphoma they had. And uh, a simple metric for that is uh, total metabolic tumor volume as determined by PET-CT. And this is something that we don't routinely clinically look at. We look at, you know, SUV max and the brightness of spots, and certainly we can add up uh, total volume observed, but it's not a metric that all of our nuclear medicine docs relate to us. So in this research context, we got to look at TMTV, total metabolic tumor volume, and prediction of outcomes uh, for glofitimab-treated patients in the pivotal phase two trial, and the result was striking. And it's maybe not that surprising and kind of straightforward. Patients with bulky lymphoma had much worse outcomes. The punchline was that patients on the um, uh, above the median TMTV, the bulkier than average patients had 12 month PFSs around 15% compared to 50% uh, with the patients with less bulky lymphoma. So this is probably true of many therapies that bulky tumors do poorly, uh, but differently so for each therapy. Uh, for antibody based therapies, this has been well known, uh, but for bispecific antibodies, we're just learning this now. What's the implication of this? You know, you might say maybe bulky patients shouldn't be treated with this approach, but we still need to treat them with something. And this is one of the most promising therapies we have, especially in third-line DLBCL. So maybe another consideration is we have to start looking at uh, combination therapies, and maybe the simplest one would be uh, radiotherapy plus by specific antibodies. This is just a hypothesis. I'm not referring to data that we have already looked at, but many bulky tumor patients have one primary bulky site. We wouldn't be able to irradiate every site, but if we could, you know, irradiate a bulkiest site. We could convert perhaps some of those high TMTV patients to low TMTV patients and get, you know, 12-month PFSs more like 50% and less like 15%. So uh, bulky tumor respond worse to glofitimab, probably other immunotherapies as well, and we have to think of new ways to try to counteract that.